to handle the pressure. We'll find out about that. Kentucky comes into this game at 30 and 2. They have annihilated the opposition all season long. The only losses to UMass and Mississippi State. They've won their games by an average of nearly 23 points per game. That's the largest margin of victory in the nation this year. They've scored more than 100 points eight times this season. And, Bill, so much of their offense comes from great pressure defense. Extraordinary. And they lead you to their promised land, Sean McDonough, right about half court. A lot of coaches call it Death Valley. All of a sudden, the trap, the hands, the bigness reveals itself. They read, they pay attention, and they're terrific at stripping, deflecting, and going to Walter's altar to finish. Meanwhile, the Utes of Utah, very fundamentally sound team at 27 and 6, led by one of the best players in the country, the two-time WAC Player of the Year, Keith Van Horn. What's so impressive about him is, is the way he can beat you with the bounce, find an opening. He really can stick the deep shot, stretches the deep, opens it up for Doliak. After his team advanced to the Sweet 16, Rick Pitino with tongue-in-cheek said his team should be the underdog against Utah. We asked Rick Majerus about that one. The only way Pitino's the underdog is if he and I are getting in a sumo ring together. I mean, then it's lights out, and, you know, if we're in a mud wrestling pit, we've got him. <laughs> <laughs> Coach Majerus, as usual. Very entertaining with the media here in Minneapolis, and we're pleased to be joined tonight at the Metrodome by Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? Well, Sean, Utah coach Rick Majerus tells me that while Keith Van Horn is healthy, his bout with the flu last week has left him somewhat out of condition. But Majerus was very pleased with his team's close practice session yesterday, which emphasized defense. In fact, the defining moment of that practice came about midway through. Majerus sat the entire team down and said, let me remind you, this game will be played for all 40 minutes, and we will stay in it to the end if you remember to play defense, use mental toughness, and hustle. Without those things, nothing else we practice will make any bit of difference. Sean? Thank you, Michelle. Now the starting lineups for Utah. Keith Van Horn joined it forward by Brandon Jesse. Michael Doliak is the center. Ben Kate and Andre Miller, the guards. For Kentucky, three forwards in the starting lineup. Antoine Walker with Walda McCarty and Derek Anderson. And the guards are Tony Delk, the SEC Player of the Year, and Anthony Epps. Kentucky with a win tonight would have victory number 1,647 in school history. And the Wildcats would tie North Carolina for most wins all time on all college basketball programs. Kentucky started the year 10 victories behind North Carolina. The officials working this game, Jerry Donahue, the lead official, he'll throw the ball in the air, working with Donnie Gray and Bob Donato, Kentucky dressed in white, Utah in red, and this is the sixth meeting all time between these two programs. They last met in 1993 in the second round of the NCAA tournament. Kentucky won 83-62 behind 19 points from Jamal Mashburn on the Cats' way to the Final Four. Winner of this goes to the Final Eight. We're underway. Horn got a piece of the tip, but the ball wound up with Antoine Walker. And the youth, Sean McDonough, man a man. A lot of motion, a lot of post rubs, a lot of duck ins by the inside people. And the first shot of the game from Anthony Epps is a three. And the Cats are out quickly to a 3 0 lead. And what that does is set up the pressure. Utah will try and look long initially, try and attack it in pieces, nice and slow, and try and post up and step to the ball. Miller guarded by Delk. Now Van Horn. Michelle mentioned bothered by the flu last weekend in the first two rounds, but has recovered. Jesse short with his shot, ups the rebound. And look at the balance. One thing Rick Majerus addressed get back and identify. Delk, that's a two-point try. The other key, he said, was keep Kentucky off the offensive glass. They didn't do that successfully, but Derek Anderson missed the follow-up shot. 3-0 Kentucky. And Utah, a lot of motion, a lot of bumps. Doliak inside, really a tough performer. He reads that double, or he's going to have to do it better than that. And his pass deflected to Epps, then Epps dribbled one off his foot. Managed to save it. Walker can shoot the three. And score the basket for Tony Delk, and Doliak fouled him, and Delk will have a chance for a three-point play. Chuck Rick Majerus said offensive rebound is important. They got a defensive rebound. Uh, the missed dribble by Epps, almost in Epps, but Elk, the aggressive rebound, can play inside, posts up, and get to the glass. Long arm and extremely strong, Sean. The word Coach Majerus used yesterday was unbelievable when describing Kentucky's prowess on the offensive glass. Seen that. Come a factor in the first minute and a half. 
5-0 UK. The first Utah point to the pitch. McCarty, that's the first foul called against Kentucky. Kentucky foul number 41. McCarty, the senior from Evansville, Indiana, having a terrific NCAA tournament, tied his career high with 24 points in the opening round win against San Jose State. They had 19 in the second round victory against Virginia Tech. A lot of post up. You see Doliak very active. Van Horn can stretch the D with the outside shooting. They go into Doliak. He missed a short one. Rebounded by Walker. And then he was stripped for a moment by Miller. Dealt to the rescue. Epps from outside again. And they might want to move out on him. That's a two-point field goal. And correct that. A three-point field goal. And now Jesse in transition. Bumped by McCarty. And that's two fouls on Walter McCarty. Now Kentucky is gambling in the backcourt and exposing their basket. They're not retreating very well. Epps, incidentally, Rick said he takes three three-pointers a game. Well, he's knocked them all down, but here's the home run look. Everybody up, and generally, Kentucky gets back and addresses. They peel back and play that deep guy. Not a good job early. McCarty on the bench, and Mark Pope in, wearing number 41. Jesse makes the first of two. Utah, the best free throw shooting team in the nation this year, 78.4%. Doliak rebounded his miss. And then Caton's pass deflected and intercepted by Delk. It's 11 to 5, Kentucky, just past three minutes play. Epps feels it. And missed that time. Anderson had it batted away by Jesse. Look to push and then settle. This is where Van Horn is tough. It tracks the double, spins away. And his fall away was short. Epps on the push. Dealt. Blocked by Van Horn into the hands of Doliak. Utes don't want to track me, but the pace has been quick over the first three plus minutes. And there's the reverse guy screen away. Must be patient on this end. If you don't get the quick hitter, run your stuff. Four minutes played. Kentucky leads 11 to 5. Nice, nice pass. And a block by Pope as Jesse went up with the shot after Miller found him underneath. Walker. And Anderson scores off the Walker feed. Now Anderson's an interesting matchup. At the other end, he was playing Keith Van Horn. A quick 20 by Majerus. He's quick. He's a slasher and a wonderful look off the jump shot. One thing about Rick Pitino's Kentucky team, they love to give it up. Even their star performer, Antoine Walker, dish with the best of them. A little hang time at the end by Derek Anderson. It's dangerous to compare anybody to Magic Johnson, but coaches say that Walker at 6'8 has Magic Johnson-like ability in that he can handle the ball. He's a terrific passer and obviously a great scorer. Well, a great recruit, a McDonald's All-American, and just last year, a little like Ron Mercer, Rick brought him along slowly, adjusted, understands how to play, and even in the SEC game, if you remember, Rick was disappointed in his play in the second half, sat him, they said he had his best practice the next day back on campus. 
They back it off now. One thing Rick Pitino saw in the Colorado State film that the zone gave Utah some trouble. They're still trapping half court though. And Miller made a tough shot from the elbow. And it's 13 to 7. Allen Edwards has checked in for Walker. Edwards is number three. Anderson. Off a nice pass from Delk. Why is it great players get bailout passes? That Delk was strung out. Good recognition by the cut. Anderson. Smaller lineup in the game with Edwards instead of Walker for Kentucky. And a foul. Van Horn will shoot two as he was hit across the arm by Allen Edwards, the sophomore from Miami, the brother of Douglas Edwards, who played at Florida State, now in the NBA. Stephen Edwards, who just finished a terrific career at the University of Miami. Wayne Turner has come in wearing number five, and Jeff Shepard, 15 in for UK. And Ben Melmoth is in for Utah, wearing number 30. And Sean, that's the thing that catches up to you late with Kentucky. Fatigue becomes a factor. The deep bench, nine or ten guys over ten minutes a game. They come in and out, same kind of intensity. Incidentally, I was wondering if you and Keith Van Horn uh, went to the same barber. <laughs> <laughs> But Keith would keep the barber a lot busier than I would. You didn't pay much either, huh? No, I'm still angling for half price, but it doesn't work. Two free throws by Van Horn. It's a six-point game. The run and use of Utah in the NCAA tournament for the fourth time in the last six years under Rick Majerus. The Utes from Salt Lake City. We mentioned earlier the leading team in the nation in free throw percentage. They won the 1944 NCAA title. An interesting story. We'll tell it when time permits. Kentucky with a six-point lead. And here's the duck in. Not good defense right, right then by Melmoth. Uh, I had a tough time getting the ticket in 44. <laughs> and the home run once again, and they are exposed. And Polk called for the foul on Van Horn, who's back up. And the foul on Pope is his first. Now the one thing in looking at tape, and this happened, you'll see the ability to step and go, and the home run pass. I mean, you got to have a heck of an arm from out of bounds. Good look, and I just thought he should have switched here to the left hand. He didn't get the right angle to jam it, but a talented performer. You can see him put it on the floor, pulls up the three, posts up, Van Horn's the whole package. He's a junior from Diamond Bar, California, in Southern California. Averaging 21 points, nine rebounds per game for the season. Black player of the year for the second year in a row. He was the freshman of the year three years ago. 17 to 11, Kentucky has the lead. And they're working inside, finding open men under the bucket. That time it was Wayne Turner with his first two of the night. Turner made the cut. Van Horn didn't get the bump. That's why he was wide open. And pressure, and it pays off for Kentucky. Turner deflected the pass. There's the ball handling of Walker. Edwards fouled, and he'll have a chance for a three-point play. They just keep coming at you. Kentucky, big blue in the open floor. You've got to get back, got to get yourself coordinated. They're very unselfish. They get eight more assists a game, Sean. This is six to Utah's two in the open floor. Right there, they didn't get the bump. See, the... The bump by the center there, Van Horn's got to make sure he spaces out. Otherwise, we're going to get open opportunities on the day. Hope kept the miss alive for Jeff Shepard. And Kentucky's out to a quick 12-point lead, 23 to 11. Six minutes played here in Minneapolis. The last foul of the Mike Mark Rydalch, who's come off the bench for Utah. And Walker sure did look like Magic Johnson that time, didn't he, handling the ball yeah, through the midcourt? Yeah, we didn't really tag your compliment about Magic. He does have a lot of flexibility inside, outside, handles the basketball. And as you saw on that pass earlier off the jumper, very unselfish. This is the matchup Rick was concerned about. If he gets one foul, they're going to switch. Patino does not like to see Walker get two personals early. And Van Horn's working on Walker and gets the bounce off the rim and the backboard. Keith Van Horn has eight of the 13 youth points. Good job on the denial. On the cuts, uh, the one thing Utah wants to do is make sure they don't go unscathed. Here's the little thing. Switch. Van Horn gets back on Pope. And Walker can make that shot as he demonstrates to Doliak. 
That's a tough match, too, isn't it? Boliak likes to body up. Home run look again. Caden in the open floor. And Caden scored. Again, it was Pope a little slow getting back. Bill, we did Kentucky's SEC loss against Mississippi State. Mississippi State used that play to Are you suggesting advantage. Rick looked at that tape. I think he might have. <laughs> Uh, Majerus says we're going to give them the threes in the half court, and that strategy is definitely not working as Allen Edwards buried a three, and Kentucky is sizzling from the field to build this 28 to 15 lead. They made their last nine field goals. And a charge called against Andre Miller. And Rick Patino livid that he was able to turn the corner, but the support defensively, so typical of Kentucky. And Miller generally of late under control as he turns the corner that time he's got to kick it before the defense steps in Kentucky has scored 28 points in just more than seven minutes and Oliver Simmons comes into the game for the Cats replacing Pope it's Epps Shepard Simmons Edwards and Walker on the floor for UK. Yeah, a little better job on Simmons, the little body bump. Look at that ball handling. And one. Yes. Walker might have gotten away with a lead in, but he did draw the foul on Doliak, and he'll have a chance for three. A little bit of twan time now, huh? He's got it on a string. Made the jumper, sucks you in a little bit. A little behind the back, a little coos. And then the lean in, a little NBA, body contact, and knock it down. Tough match for the bigger Doliak. He likes to play people inside. Seven points for Walker, the sophomore from Chicago, who was first team all SEC this season. And Preston with the ball started the point two years in a row. And they do have support. Give Miller a little blow, get his head back on after that charge. Terry Preston, number 21, into the game. Oh. Edwards ahead to Epps. I mean, you better not leave any loose change out there on the table. The Cats will pick it up. Georgia Tech, Georgetown. Texas Tech, rather, Georgetown. Tied midway through the first half. And when Shepard's in the game, Rick Majerus told us they like to run that lob, and they just did. And Reynolds just did not recognize and take the legs out of the way. Caden turned around, found himself wide open at the elbow, and knocked in the jumper. So I think Kentucky's scoring too fast. This is where people get in trouble. Look at this use of the bounce again. Discard, kickback, knockdown. Simmons makes an 11 straight field goal. Knocked down by Kentucky, and that was a three for Simmons. The freshman from Nashville, and it's 36-17, Kentucky. Right off is their leader here. He's got to calm things down a little bit, make, get an open look. Right off. And it's controlled by Edwards after it hit hard off the face of Shepard. Walker tried to force it underneath, and it's batted out of bounds by Kate. We'll return to the Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome in just a moment. Kentucky sizzling over the first nine minutes. They've opened up a 19-point lead already over the fourth-seeded Utes of Utah. The Wildcats made their last 11 field goals. The most recent, a three-pointer by Oliver Simmons, the first three-point attempt of his career. The Cats five out of seven from three-point range. And Rick Pitino said his team is loose, and you got to play well to beat him right now. And they are on fire with great looks outside. Great look here. And Delk scores inside. 12 shots in a row made from the field by Kentucky. That's four points for Delk, Kentucky's leading scorer for the season. And Van Horn, that's been the best play for Utah. So it's almost like a heavyweight throwing one punch at either one of us, huh? It jolt you, put you back, losing confidence in their man-to-man. -man. Utah not able to get out on shooters. Pretty good sub, huh, Ron Mercer? Light it up. Off the bench, he's as warm as everybody else. First points for the freshman Mercer. That's 13 in a row for Kentucky. And the lead is 21. Nearly midway through the first half. Kentucky 
Leads by 21. They've made their last 13 shots from the field. And there's a miss, finally, from Delft for three-point range. But Pope out-battled Caton for the rebound. Extra pass. They're pretty. Indeed it is. Yeah, nice. Simmons off balance. Pope a tip. Delft in traffic. Well, no, a couple of misses in a row by Kentucky. Yeah, they're, well, they got subs to throw in there. <laughs> Composure, very essential now for Utah. Use a little clock. I think they, Miller on the cut. I think Mercer stood him up. And a foul called. I believe the other one. Miller mm -hmm. for an illegal screen. The winner of this game meets the winner of the game that comes up next tonight here in Minneapolis between Louisville and Wake Forest. Folks throughout Kentucky hoping for another get-together between the Cats and the Cardinals. I asked some Kentucky people, I said, maybe the people in Louisville are. <laughs> <laughs> nice post move. Win around. Walker got his own rebound and missed again. And it's batted around. Walker stripped by Kate. The depth wound up with it. Much more aggressive to dump this opportunity. Miller gets it out. Yeah, they go to Van Horn on the push-off. Well, things not going well with the whistle or with the game. And Rick Majerus didn't like the call, told Jerry Donahue that he didn't like it. Foul on Van Horn, his first, and the team's sixth, not yet a one-and-one -one situation. Steps wide open, but missed with the left hand off the inbound play. They get so free. I mean, great quickness. Read the defense extraordinarily well. Oh. Can't just throw it, they're usually there. Epps trying to return it to Delk, and Jesse intercepted. Good catch by Jesse. They said that about his father for many years, Ron Jesse, a wide receiver for many years in the NFL with the Rams and the Detroit Lions. Ran and played football in high school, thought about pursuing it the next level, but he said his dad used to get so beat up in football, he suggested to Brandon that he not play football but stick with basketball another turnover committed by Utah and uh, he's not used to this uh, Rick Majerus I mean they're usually sound fundamentally organized and they get in your head Kentucky throw you off your game a little bit it caused eight turnovers already by the Utes Mercer tried to throw it off Goliak and went through his legs to Walker all of a sudden Kentucky's gone cold They've done it with, what, nine people already, though, Sean? I mean, that's the difference. Fatigue, late, if this thing got close. A lot of motion, a lot of bumps. Doliak trying to duck in the lane. Kentucky's played 11 already. Doliak had it blocked but got it back. And then was bumped on the block by Pope. And that's two on Mark Pope. And Rick's after. Shouldn't talk to a pope like that. <laughs> Particularly being of Italian ancestry. Relax, you gotta say your prayers to him. He gets after his guys that make a mistake on the defensive end. Sean McDonough, Bill Raftery back here at the Metrodome. Kentucky has shot 57% to open up a 21 point lead. Utah 50%, but they've turned it over eight times. And they've allowed Kentucky seven offensive rebounds. And Anthony Epps making those first couple of shots, as you said during a timeout, really the guy who got Kentucky started. They got their confidence and a uh, nice inbounds pass here. Van Horn to the rim, and Simmons doesn't get a body on him. But also the defense, even though they don't turn you over, they get the point total going. I mean, mm -hmm. Rick Pitino would be, I don't want to give up baskets. We would like to get back and protect but it generates some lift to the opponent. They think they can do it all the time. Now they got you to an open floor game. And Horn four for four from the line. This is Tech. In a tie game a moment ago at Georgetown. All of a sudden leads by eight. And Horn did not play in the first round game. The big win over Canisius. And then fouled out in the second round game against Iowa State. First time he had fouled out this year. He scored 11 points against the Cyclone. He has 12 already tonight. But his team is down by 19. Good quick cut. Look at that slashing ability. Didn't finish Anderson, but Derrick gets the puppies up and down. 
Drew Hansen's in the game, has the ball now for Utah, number 34. Peyton, with that right in his face, makes a long three. He has some range, and that should help the big guys, too. Rick Pitino doesn't like it. Quick 20. He gets nervous when they get less than 20 on his team. And that's a tight game for Kentucky, as we mentioned earlier this season. Ben Caton with the three. They've got Utah within 16. And they shoot 37%. They just don't have the opportunities, the looks, because of the quickness on the D by Rick Katz. Kentucky with 38 regular season SEC titles, including their perfect 16-0 season in conference this year. They've won more SEC titles than the other 11 schools combined. And they've won five NCAA championships, most recent in 1978. Much has been written and said about Rick Pitino's quest to get Kentucky another national title and win his first as a coach. I just remember listening to the radio, okay, with Ledford in the 50s and 60s and those great clubs, 48, 49, a little before me, but 51 and on. Look at this inside post. A lot of answers right now. Walker in or out. Antoine Walker is nine. Kentucky has missed eight shots in a row from the floor after making 13 in a row. And the make by Walker, nearly the steal by Delk, who knocked it out of bounds. It was inbounded. Brandon Jesse back into the game. And, and right now you can see Utah said, tough spot to bring the basketball in. Back screen, somebody goes long, step to the ball. And not and a good foul, huh? Edwards put the hit on Doliak. Near the conclusion of every NCAA tournament game, we will select a genuine Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has contributed almost five and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Seven team fouls now against Kentucky, so a one and one situation. And Michael Doliak, a sophomore from Portland, Oregon, goes to the line. Another of the excellent free throw shooters for the Utes at 80%. Missed the first, Van Horn got the rebound and was stripped. And he looks a little weaker than he did when I saw him last year. Edwards had a three battle out, Van Horn the rebound. And the kick ahead for Tate. The speed shot, huh? Epps running down. Utah get the ball back. Now you mentioned Doliak. Rick Majerus gave him a scholarship before he saw him play a game. Saw him as a junior in the summer, signed him before the season. He was not, he didn't play well in the morning at a workout. All the coaches, major coaches left. Rick stayed in the afternoon, he played well, said, you're coming to Utah. Well, yeah, was a bench warmer as a junior in high school, really only played one year as a senior. And Jarris had seen him in camps. I'll tell you, Jesse gets this one, a little bump. And looking at some tape, and Rick Majera is not happy with the calls because he's not happy with his team, and you can't fault them. But Utah does move a little on a screen. Mm -hmm. and if they call those closely, you're going to have some serious problems. And they have called it closely to this point. Jesse's foul is first, and that puts Utah over the limit. Derek Anderson, transfer from Ohio State, makes the front end of the one and one. He has five points and one rebound. Uh, I thought it was interesting in the Kentucky book talking. He went to Ohio State because of Jimmy Jackson leaving Ohio State. Figured he'd play. And his favorite athlete, Jimmy Jackson. <laughs> I don't know if that's for leaving and giving him an opportunity there. The home run again. And it's there. Van Horn missed the layup. The Kentucky doesn't let you dunk it. They hustle back. And at the other end, Delt missed a three. And Horn up in traffic. And then the youth fans thought he was fouled, and Rick Majerus did as well. And Kentucky will play it in. So you got to call those for Majerus. I mean, that was unfortunate. I mean, he has not had much of a shake on some of these calls. And look at this terrific big-time stat. Oh, and now the grab. That's the one that he wanted right there. And he's been called for a technical by Donnie Gray, who was the outside official. Rick was directing his ire at Donnie Gray, who was an official who was maybe 50 feet away from Van Horn after he came down with the rebound. But what's important, he's the nearest ref to yes. you. That's why you go after him. Well, you can walk after somebody else. <laughs> and he also... It stays too long after Donnie Gray. 
I thought with Van Horn missing the layup, Rick Majerus was very unhappy wanting him to go and attack the tin with some authority. So let's just don't leave it up there for grabs. Epps made one of two on the technical. Now the Wildcats will play it in at midcourt. Well, you got to get the retention at some point. Things not going very well. The offensive call on Jesse, a mystery to him. Yeah, I don't blame him for being a little bit upset. No. I think were I wearing his uh, large sweater, I'd be a little bit upset with yeah. the men in stripes right now myself. You'd also be suffocating. <laughs> I'd be lost. <laughs> Edwards gives it to Epps on the floor with Anderson, Elk, and Walker. Another small lineup for Kentucky. Goliak on the dribble. Everybody helps, opens up the passing lane. Send it in. Delk at 6-1, able to elevate from right under the rim and get up for the one-handed jam, and Tony has six. Oh, he's so impressive. A DD, a Delk dunk, but all because of Walker's dribbling ability. Jesse had a tough start. Walker, the quick outlet to Delk, and here they come again. Anderson. And Anderson... Control the rebound. Edwards, a little bit out of control. Half-hearted whistle. Then blown with fervor on the second try by Bob Canato. Sean Antoine Walker, very vocal. I mean, displaying his ability to find people in traffic. Del sending it in, but all because of Twan time. And then at the stoppage of play, he got after all the guys. You see the speed of this Kentucky team? Mm -hmm. Defense, back on offense, cuts, non-stop energy. Allen Edwards, long with the first free throw attempt. And John, as you look at this Kentucky team playing this way, they are a very tough out. I do not see a team playing them at this high level. I mean, they are as mentally prepared as I've seen them. Had them against Florida, I mean, they, they've won games 22, 24 points on an average, and I have not seen this display. High energy, all out. They've run off eight straight points. They lead by 24. As Richard Williams, the Mississippi State coach, said before his team beat Kentucky in the SEC championship, it takes your team having an excellent day and Kentucky having a bad day, and that's what happened in New Orleans. That's a three for Ben Caton, a junior from Alamosa, Colorado. Rick Pitino said after that game, he was happy in one sense that his team lost because it would get them refocused for the tournament. Some people dismiss that as coach speak, but we said it on the air that day as well. It probably was a good thing for them to lose that game. Yeah, and I think he half meant it because he doesn't like to lose anything. No. I think mentally he was right, though. He's, he's got a nice post feed, the extra effort. It's almost like they're in overdrive and Utah's in neutral right now. And the reaction not quite in the same league. Joliak trying to spin. He went spinning into the double team, and Edwards stripped him. Last touch by Utah. Kentucky plays it in with 4.02 in the half. And here's the down screen. You'll end up with the three at the end. The busting through the middle. Getting, this is a tough square up, Sean. Turn, knock it down. If they've been able to run something, which is rather infrequent, they haven't complemented it with a goal. That time, Caton on the money. Doliak goes to the bench. Ben Melmoth is back into the game for the Utes, who are down 21 with under four, remaining in the first half. Shepard, pretty. Walker, the acrobatic lay in. Not too bad, huh? Hang a little, and then kiss. Miller. Incomplete. Intended for Jesse. Well, that time, Andre put it in the one hand. Got to hold on. TV timeout. The Cats up 23. Well, Sean McDonough, giving of oneself is contagious. Uh, maybe you'll catch it. <laughs> Twan has been giving it up, and now Shepard with the ability to get into the thick, the physical ability to take this hit, the kiss at the end, a McDonald's All-American. And what did uh, Rick Majera say about... Uh, They've got six McDonald's All-Americans. said they have seven McDonald's All-Americans. We have four guys who don't even have a McDonald's in their hometown. <laughs> he also said that Utah tried to recruit Walker. There's Walker on the lob, as easy as it gets. From out of bounds to Walker. So we tried to recruit Walker. He said when we saw the letter from Utah, he probably figured it was some sort of cult. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, he does. Uh, he's going to need a sense of humor the next 20 minutes. Ha Halftime, he will not be telling any Milton Berle jokes. I know that. No. He was loose yesterday, that's for sure. But I think he had a feeling that this could happen, as any coach who gets ready to play Kentucky fears. They have the kind of talent to do this to any team, regardless of how talented that team might be. That little jump ball. Jesse with the good cut, the quick reaction to double up. And, and incidentally, the inbounds passed with Utah. They weren't ready. No. Melmoth didn't prepare Walker. You've got to be alert. Be prepared. And right here, you turn your head. You don't have vision on the basketball. They're not harassing the inbounds passer. Things that Utah generally does well for Rick Majerus. Look at the post by Shepard. Oh, easy shots from inside. That one rolled off. Last touch by Melmoth. Utah has turned it over 13 times already. They only average 14 turnovers per game for the season, so they're probably going to surpass that here in the first half. And we're talking about offensive rebounds as being important. Kentucky has nine. Utah just one. And even the half-court defense, now there's a the little bump there quick to a spot, and Utah not able to recover. Wayne Turner, the freshman from Boston, with the miss and a foul on Kentucky on the rebound. Kentucky leads by 25 with 2.33 left in the first half. Antoine Walker just picked up his first foul for Kentucky. And Rick Pitino's team over the limit. They've committed eight team fouls and a one and one opportunity upcoming for Ben Melmoth of Utah. Native Australian. And a lane violation. Walker in early, so Melmoth has another chance. The winner of this game advances to the Elite Eight on Saturday afternoon here at the Metrodome. The winner would meet the winner of the game coming up next year in Minneapolis between Louisville and Wake Forest. And Utah not a team known for pressing, Sean, so they're going to have to get back in their half-court sets. Kentucky, one point, made 13 consecutive field goals. They've cooled off, but they're still 5 of 11 from three-point range. And Utah, uncharacteristically sloppy with the ball. And the lead is 23 for Kentucky. Got to be sound, got to check out if you're Utah. The quickness on the cuts. His little screen down, the hedge. I mean, they are sound defensively. It's just this team has counters. Walker, the pull-up. And Melmoth, the rebound. He is a native of Australia. He went to high school in Salt Lake City at Judge Memorial High. He was Mr. Basketball in the state of Utah after his senior year. Miller to Jesse on the floor with Van Horn, Melmoth, and Kate for the Utes. Look at Kentucky double and recover. Simmons out. Jesse continues cold. Simmons had it knocked free by Jesse. Then Turner hit the deck. Great hustle. Two Utes dove into the pile. And after the held ball, the alternating possession gives it to Utah. Now my cousin Vinny had two Utes after the ball. <laughs> Good hustle. And uh, one thing Kentucky does, I mean, if it's there, they're going to pick it up or get after it. And that's what Utah has to meet that level of intensity they have not early in this game and now kentucky's gone 12 deep here in the first half as nazi muhammad the freshman wearing number 13 is into the game and kentucky can't lose how are you going to beat a pope and a muhammad <laughs> <laughs> and along the end line a whistle no basket miller was fouled on the drive and Andre will go to the free throw line. Foul on Muhammad, his first. Didn't take him long. He arrived in Kentucky this summer weighing 303 pounds. And in less than three months, they had knocked 50 pounds off his frame. He's now a solid 249 from Chicago. And they better keep him away from Rick Majerus after the game. Don't let those two go dining. <laughs> a second opportunity for Utah something Rick hasn't had very many of met him first when Al McGuire nice little bump to get this good shooting Caton oh Ben knock him down Caton has been 
One of the few bright spots here in the first half for Utah. He has 13 points, five better than his average per game for the year. I, I started to say Ned and Rick when he was, Majerus, when he was with Al McGuire. And a great teacher, good step in, don't get the call. And they've taken away his teaching, is my point, Sean. Certainly paid his dues. 12 years as an assistant at Marquette before he became the head coach. Been an assistant for a year under Don Nelson with the Milwaukee Bucks, then off the Ball State for two very successful years. A great run for seven years at Utah. Jesse after the block, and Van Horn with the tip in. I get a little more into it on the glass. A couple of more second opportunities. Van Horn is 14 of the 34 Utah points. Kentucky with 54 points. Far cry from the 86 they put on LSU in the first half of the game this year, but nonetheless, an amazing offensive half by the Wildcats. I think Dale has nightmares when you mentioned the state of Kentucky, huh? Mm. He's had his troubles. 1-4 here, a high pick and roll. <laughs> and a runner by Epps. Got to move it quick. They got to get a shot. They need to hurry. Seven seconds. Caton guarded tightly. Uh, forced oh, shot the big go. Caton tipped, and that one doesn't count. And Horn put it in just after the buzzer had sounded. Well, they looked again like the best team in the country in that they first half. Sure did. Every, everything at a high level of intensity. The defense, quick curls, easy shots, and unselfish play. Kentucky. The end of the first half, Kentucky 56, Utah 34. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship will continue after this message and a word from your local station. He's a double screen here for one. Edwards unsure. Well, might as well knock it down. And then the drive, draw, and find as Antoine Walker has shown a little magic on the kickback out for Simmons' first three in his career. The turnover, a factor two. Now, you wanted a three-point play. We're going to give you one, Sean McDonough, only it's the traditional three. Off a turnover, they're extremely quick, getting down and completing. And just as quickly, we'll go to Michelle Tafoya. All right, Sean, we'll talk into the Kentucky coaching staff. You'd think they were the ones trailing in this game. They are not happy with the way they're defending Utah's inbounds pass, and they feel they're giving Utah too many open shots in the three-point range. But on the way to the locker room, Keith Van Hoare told his teammates, we can get back into this slowly, but we can get back in. Rick Majerus agrees as long as they block out and play tougher than they did in the first half, Sean. And Walter McCarty with the first basket of the second half. He did not score the first half, played only three minutes due to two quick fouls. Now after the turnover, dealt with a three, and Keith Van Horn might have said they can get back into it, but they're not starting off on the right foot. And Rick Majerus wants the 20. He can feel the dagger in the heart. Now his club doesn't see him. And they finally get the 20. And that's unbelievable. They get a free open look. McCarty silence with the two fouls. He gets the opportunity for the kids jumper and then the steal on the ensuing inbounds. In the first two rounds with Van Horn out completely in round one against Canisius and Ailing in round two. Brandon Jesse, Michael Doliak really helped fill the void. Jesse with 23 against Canisius. Doliak a career high 23 against Iowa State. They have three points combined, all of them belong to Doliak. Jesse has not scored, and he's a player who averages 14 a game, was first team all whack this year. He's 0 for 5. And Van Horn helping a little bit 14, but how about the turnovers? 13 to 2. Kentucky has been so sound. They turn it over 15 times again. Good post pass one of the few. Doliak a miss, got his own rebound, had it blocked at Walker. Tipped it out to Epps. This is the largest lead for Kentucky, 27 points. Largest in the first half was 25. It's a 30-point game as Delt buries a three. The extra pass. I'd love to be an assistant on Kentucky. Delray Brooks just raised the hand. Nice shot. Uh, they give it up to one another for a better opportunity. Delt is 14 points, now 1,821 for his career, number five all-time at Kentucky. And he's the highest scoring guard in UK history. Doliak off the nice feed from Van Horn. Now that's typical Utah, screen, pop, turn, dump down. They just haven't been able to do it with the frenzy play of Kentucky. Go, 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 go. 
Anderson was shut off. Now Walker. He got shoved to. Or rather, Doliak lost the rebound. And a foul called on Doliak. Yeah, if you play this kind of basketball, I mean, usually in pickup games, you'll see guys give the extra one nice and easy. College, once in a while, selfish play steps in, but not with Kentucky. They give it up, extraordinary ability, and then the counter to Doliak, and that's pretty solid Utah-type basketball. Just not getting enough of it. Doliak has three fouls. Walker dropped the ball, but picked it up and was still able to score along the baseline. And it's a 30-point game again, 66-36, just more than two minutes gone by in the second half. And yeah, almost the backcourt there. You notice know Walker down at the box, though? That's what Rick wanted him in the SEC championship. Pass deflected by McCarty as Utah tried to whip it underneath. And the lob to McCarty and the kick out for three from Delt, rebounded by Doliak. And uh, Van Orn didn't see it. And Van Horn a miss. And got a hand on the rebound but could not control. And Keith Van Horn just a little fatigued as they get another open look. And look at keeping it alive by McCarty. His own guy thinks he's got to walk okay. Well, traveled. He was fouled by his own man, Walter McCarty. And Pope and Shepard come back into the game for the Wildcats. Ron Mercer also re-enters the game. Walker, Delk, and Anderson take a seat. They get the walk on the baseline. Dead ball situation, not after a goal. I'm sure the red, that's what happens. They're so frazzled. Referees always tell you, here, you can't run when they hand the ball. This is a very smart Utah team. They have 12 players on the honor roll in the spring quarter a year ago and seven this past fall. And Jared said if this was a college bowl or spelling bee, I'd really like our chances, but it's basketball. We're a serious underdog. And it's proven so. And there are a number of bright guys on the Kentucky team, uh, most notably Mark Pope, who had a perfect 4.0 last fall as a Rhodes Scholar candidate. Almost made two, it. huh? Almost made it. Kate has had a terrific game, a trend that continues as he got the bounce off the rim, and Van will have a chance for a three-point play. When you're down, you're always looking for somebody to step up. Ben Caton, as you noted, made some threes here. They're hugging him. They don't want him to take the deep one, but getting into the middle, able to counter. And one thing about Utah, they run motion, but at the end, if it's not working, they use the dribble to get to the foul line. 15 points, now 16 on six out of seven from the floor. His career high is 20 in the win for Utah over BYU in a home game at the Huntsman Center. What a great, fierce rivalry that is. He knows Pope, too. He can step out. He and McCarty take the threes. Shepard spinning in the lane, knocked into the 13-footer, and Jeff has six. Very athletic performer. As you noted, lob to him. 29-point game. Kentucky in command. Not yet four minutes played in the second half. Jesse still looking for his elusive first points. And now he's in the score sheet. There you go. He looks a little more aggressive, asserting himself, the jumper, then the rundown. Brandon, one out of seven. He's a senior, could well be playing in his last game for Utah unless something dramatic happens here. Mercer missed a three, rebound Doliak. Well, you better get a hand up on these Kentucky guys. Jesse guarded tightly by Mercer. And Miller swatted by McCarty out of bounds. And a timeout. And we'll return to Minneapolis in a moment. It was 52 years ago, Utah won its only NCAA title. Herb Wilkinson hit the shot Bill Raftery taught him. <laughs> Give the Utes a 42-40 overtime victory over Dartmouth. Freshman Arnie Farron was named the tournament's most outstanding player. He would later become the athletic director at the University of Utah. We mentioned in the first half, it's an interesting story how they won that 44 title. They 
actually began the postseason in 44 in the NIT and lost in the first round of Kentucky. They were on their way back home when they got a phone call that the NCAA needed a team because Arkansas had had an accident. Their team was not able to play. Utah went as a fill-in. They didn't have sneakers. They borrowed sneakers from the Canisius players, and they wound up winning the NCAA championship. And that's the only way I'd probably get in the tournament, too, if uh, there was an accident <laughs> to some other team. Yeah, you know, the amazing thing, Sean, at the end of that, they lost the NIT. St. John's, I believe, won it, so they had a benefit game for the war bonds. And in that game, uh, Utah won, but St. John's had Cousin of Maine later to be a Nick coaches. We see the penetrating, that's the good type of defense there as Turner turns the corner. And uh, Fuzzy, of course, later become a coach in St. John's, uh, one of the great story basketball teams. Harry Boykoff, another player, so some big names. These two teams met again in 1947, the NIT championship game. And Utah was victorious over Kentucky. Back in the days when the NIT was really the, the big event. It was it. I mean, everybody held it in high esteem. And Utah, in those days, didn't turn it over, I'm sure. And they generally don't turn it over now. They have 16 turnovers. Their season high is 21. I mean, this has really hurt them. They're a team that averages 14, as you mentioned earlier. And uh, how many did you say? Number 17 now. Approaching their season high, they'll probably surpass the 21 they committed in a game against Hawaii earlier this season 29 point game Kentucky leads they've been comfortably ahead from the outset took control in the opening minutes and haven't let up they've only turned it over three times it's been about as impressive performance as the team put on Mercer a miss and there for the follow Antoine Walker too many too quick too often I mean, you can't put enough bodies on but right off wide open nice luck Van Horn, great adjustment around the rim. Off the feed from Mark Rydalsh and Van Horn. Taking off the after effects of the flu is 16 points. And Tucky doesn't even let you rejoice in your field goal, though. No. Push it right back at you, challenge you. Georgetown has come behind to take the lead over Texas Tech with 12 minutes remaining. And a lot of pro scouts here for a lot of reasons. Timmy Duncan being one of them, but Mark Rydals, the heart and soul of this team with a nice look to Van Horn and then the counter beating the break with that home run pass. Mark Rydals with a layup, another home run pass. And it's a 27 point lead for Kentucky. Hope goes inside. And Mercer, you can see him getting more and more confident as the year goes along. Now you always acknowledge the Pope. The good look, <laughs> strength by Mercer. Well, you mentioned Van Horn, pro scouts are here. With an eye on Keith, the reverse layup. Definitely some style points there. And Rick Majeri says he's not certain what Keith will do, but he said given the money that he is likely to get, he would recommend that he would recommend that he go even though he thinks Van Horn would benefit greatly from coming back in another year of college play his family situation is such that you know, the money would be nice for any of us <laughs> well physically I think he needs the, uh, the, the uh, extra year a wife and a daughter makes it a little difficult he so, has a one-year-old daughter he'll be married to the mother of his child this summer and Rick Majerus estimates he'd get about $6 million in a contract based on where he assumes Van Horn would be drafted in the first round. He said after taxes, it's $3 million. You can still buy a nice house, a car, and live off the rest of that money the rest of your life. Well, you, sophist you sophisticates can talk in those high numbers, uh, <laughs> and he'll just perform. Getting out, and as you mentioned, uh, give him a 10 on a little bit of a reverse. But looking at Rick Majerus and the Utah team, they were painstaking in details at what they were going to take away from Kentucky. But what you can't do is replicate the foot speed, right? Uh, the agility, the frenzied pace. And I think that's what's destroyed them in this ball game. Nice penetration by Ben Caden. And Doliak knocks in a 10-footer. He has seven. And Utah has narrowed the deficit to 25 points, 11.45 left. Anderson, Delk, Epps, Pope, and McCarty on the floor for Kentucky. And this is where Delk is tough for the guard. Look at the help by Doliak. Nice sniffing down there. 
Yeah, might have been bumped. Shot wouldn't drop. Pope a couple of tips. And it was kept alive by McCarty. See, that's a tough match. Doliak has had to come out of Walker, Anderson. Epps, nice bounce pass, and Anderson will have a chance for a three-point play. You know, Epps grows on you, Sean, watching games all year long, and you see him come up with great post-entry passes, made the threes out of the gate, gets a little over three, or excuse me, 4.7 assists a game. Here's a great look, and the slasher, the guy, the in-betweener, who can play that small shooting position, Anderson, shooting guard, small forward, anything you ask. And a personality to boot. And a timeout. After the three-point play, it's 77-49, Kentucky. Welcome back to the Metrodome in Minneapolis, Kentucky, leading Utah 77-49. Michelle Tafoya and I am joined by Clem Haskins, the coach of the Minnesota Golden Gophers, and no stranger to the state of Kentucky. You coached at Western Kentucky in the 80s. Your thoughts on this dominating performance by Kentucky and whether or not it, uh, they're beatable? Tonight, they're not beatable. I tell you what, they're about 10 or 12 deep. They're playing outstanding basketball. They got a great inside play, great defense pressure. It's going to take a great performance to beat the Kentucky team. They will meet the uh, winner of the East should they move on to the Final Four. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I tell you what, I think it's interesting here, but uh, this ball club tonight is very impressive. They've got 70 some points up here, and, and we still have over 10 minutes to go in the basketball game. Louisville and Wake Forest are the next matchup. I'm sure you'll be sticking around for that one. Any thoughts? A lot of Kentucky fans here, both Louisville and Kentucky, so it's like a little home week here. But again, it's going to be a very interesting game. Louisville's on a roll. Wake Forest has been very consistent throughout the year, too. Coach Clem Haskins, congratulations on a great season. Thanks very much. Thank you. And Louisville and Wake Forest coming up next at the conclusion of this game, about a half hour after the finish. Jesse. Continues to have tough luck shooting now. One out of eight. And Utah Trail, 77-49. Epps. Anderson, the offensive rebound. A whistle for a foul. Plum really going out on the limb on his uh, picks, huh? Yes. As most coaches. And uh, during the timeout, we were talking about Rick Majerus. You, you feel sorry for a team who, who just does not give a coach a chance. I don't think they gave him a chance to establish a game plan. You know, obviously Kentucky at the high level, the octane. Very difficult to contest with. Cardi too strong off the glass, but again, Anderson was there to keep it alive, and Miller finally able to control. Doliak to Peyton. Peyton has been a standout, and Horn, Jesse, and Miller also on the floor for Utah. And look at all the attention Van Horn gets in there. Shot clock at 13. Jesse continues to shoot without much success. McCarty controls the rebound. And Epps will slow it down. Epps, Anderson, McCarty, Pope, and Delt for Kentucky. A nice little hedge by Van Horn. And the three by Pope. Nice dimension, isn't it? He and McCarty able to step out, enables the smaller guys to slash, post up, use the rubs down low. First points of the game for Pope. He can make the three, made 15 coming into tonight's game. And that's after the steal, lays it in. Another turnover that proves costly to Utah. Can they turn it on on the turnover? I mean, from that defensive snare to the goal. 19 turnovers by the Utes, and four in a long three. And he is 21. He's right on his average, but his team is getting blown out. Down by 30. As we pick down to nine minutes left. Anderson got the answer. Van Horn, another rebound. Now, uh, right now, what you're looking for is just some dignity, and that's exactly what Van Horn is doing with this Utah team. Trying to get respectable. Caton, the runner, and he gets the charitable rim. And 18 points for Ben Caton, two off his career high. Oh, what a tip. The slasher, Derek. 
Whereas Rick Majer said yesterday, number 23. There's so many guys <laughs> in Kentucky you can't keep track of all the names and numbers. He said 23 and 33 are exactly alike, meaning Anderson and Mercer. Uh, their ability to read, huh? Just let it linger up there. And that's that quickness to the goal. And the step in continues. This club is relentless. And I thought Van Horn could have hustled, got in front, maybe gotten a piece, committed a little early. Epps wisely ducked the head, reached to the goal. Drew Hansen back in the game with Mark Rydalch. Holy Rydalch family will save on gas money after tonight. Mark's parents, Bob and Gene, have been to virtually every game Utah has played over the last seven years. Mark has a brother, Craig, who played at Utah, starting back in 1989. Since then, the Rydalches, both of them, or at least one or the other, have made every game but one. They both missed a game this year against the Air Force due to church commitments. Other than that, one or the other, and usually both, have been to every game played by their sons since 1989. And you think about the whack. That's home and away. And they're talking about trips to Hawaii and some of the places you go in that league. It's astounding that they could do that. The other end, uh, they have daughters, I think, that into music as well, and they claim, and they're there, mm -hmm. I assure you that uh, they don't miss any of their functions. I think they're, they're in the electrical business and the brothers rotate the vacation time. One brother goes in the summer and the, the uh, Marx folks make sure they make all those games. Right off just once had their car stolen on a trip to El Paso, but they persist. Back in a moment. Bill, I'm sure those guys appreciate that you left them your complimentary tickets. As usual, the NCAA committee affording you respect. Great influence. They're actually Twins fans waiting for the start of a doubleheader. <laughs> Amazing that Kentucky can play the game at this pace and commit only four turnovers. Utah's not scoring a point off a Kentucky turnover tonight. And the Cats lead by 32 with 7.40 remaining. Sean McDonough, Bill Raftery, a very quiet Metrodome. And now turning their thoughts to the second game here tonight between Louisville and Wake Forest, which we anticipate will be much more competitive than this one. And in the east, in Atlanta, Arkansas and UMass, the tip time approximately 10 Eastern time, about a half hour from now. In the traffic goes Caton, and he has matched his career high with 20 points. He's 24 years old, just a junior. He's one of five players on this Utah team who's gone off on a church mission. And he's one of three players on the team married. Ben Caton's wife is Angie. He's an honor roll student as well. A roller, huh? He's amazing. The ability to use the dribble. Amazing thing on defense, Sean, of this Kentucky team is how they get to the box when the ball is delivered down there. Quickness, cover, show big. Look at them sniffing. Here's one. Look how fast the close is. And Van Horn of a nice pass from Miller missed from in close, and Allen Edwards rebounded. Shepard the lob. <laughs> well, he can elevate. Great high jumper in high school. I think the pass wasn't high enough. He can linger. Look at the close by Walker. Well, Swan's guarding today. Maybe he didn't like the way he guarded the SEC. Championship. Right all with the three. Dolly probably got away with a push off. It was fouled on the way back up. For those who didn't see the SEC championship game, Antoine Walker sat on the bench for 17 minutes in the second half with Kentucky losing to Mississippi State. Coach Patino trying to send a message and Anthony Epps said last year Walker would have pouted for a week. He said this year, the very next day, after being benched in the second half, he was the hardest worker in practice. He would have gone into the suitcase. Instead, he stepped up, showed a lot of energy. And Rick, uh, I'm sure delighted with not only his play, but their aggressive side today. This is some turnaround. With an eye towards Saturday, chance for Patino to rest his starters. First fatigue, ordinarily not as much of a problem for Kentucky as it is for other teams because they are 10, 11, 12 deep. They've played 12 tonight in the first half. 12 players appeared for Kentucky. Doliak now with nine points and eight rebounds. He'll be replaced by Ben Melman. 
And, and looking at Rick here, thinking about Don Haskins having that bypass surgery, and he went down to the hospital to be there. I believe Willie Cager, one of his former players, that great UTEP team that beat Kentucky. Rupp's Runs, I believe, were the opponent. And 66 down in Maryland. Larry Conley, a guy you've worked with quite a bit. Yes. And Pat Riley, a guy who has an unusual hairdo. Pretty Shepherd well coiffed. Thought he was fouled. Don Haskins, legendary UTEP coach, 35 years at Texas El Paso. And Coach Majerus really believes that he should be in the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. Rick Majerus had seven bypasses seven years ago. So he told Haskins, hey, three, that's nothing. You'll be all right. I had seven. He can run it off, right? That's right. Well, you can tell by uh, Rick Majerus' diet that he's concerned about the bypass. <laughs> Abs the miss. And Caton the rebound. Now, you dined with Coach Majerus, and he's very proud of his eating prowess. We're not poking fun at him. He takes care of that himself. But uh, what was the dining experience? Well, like it, it, I, we don't have time <laughs> to elaborate. And he's one of those guys that if it's on your plate, it's his. <laughs> it's his is his, and what's yours is his. <laughs> we'll see if he gets a parking pass. He said uh, the last time they made it to the Sweet 16 in 1991, he was given a parking pass. Is that on a bonus? Is in my contract, but the parking pass was nice. We're an urban campus, and it's tough to get a parking space. Four WAC titles in the last six years for Rick, averaging 24 and a half the last six. He said the next year when they didn't go to the Sweet 16, he lost his parking well, pass. It's only and fitting. So well, what? Where do you park? He said, Well, I've become very friendly with the campus police. <laughs> he probably uses the hotel van to get from his room. He lives in a hotel as he has the day he arrived at. Utah, what a character. His name now comes up for every coaching vacancy with his track record of success. Won't be going to Illinois, as some had speculated. Lon Kruger, named coach of the Illini today. And jumping to Rick Pitino, uh, this team as prepared as I have seen his team. I, and I do get a kick since I've known him a long, long time as a youngster. Watch the games even when you're not getting ready for him. Uh, it just the way he points his team and the aggressive side of them. Reach back, referee's time as Jesse took a little bit of a, a shot. Uh, they look ready, Sean, is my point with Rick Pitino. Used to be with Jimmy Beheim. Obviously, he didn't take any of his personality with him. <laughs> Rick's outgoing, pleasant, even says hello. And Jesse hit in the face. And he has gone out of the game. Drew Hansen is back in. Well, it's become trendy these days to write long profile pieces about Rick Pitino. We saw one recently in Sports Illustrated, a cover story. There was another in the local paper here today. And almost as if people are suggesting that there's something wrong with you if you have an intense desire to win the national yeah, championship. I, I don't really think Rick is separated from anybody else in the coaching profession in that desire. They'd all like to do that. Well, wouldn't you want to hire somebody who has an obsession to do well? Yes, I would. I mean, that a desire to do the best job possible? I mean, that's what I think separates him from a lot of guys. He drives himself, his staff, his players. I mean, the way they've reacted, just a concerted effort, the, the philosophy of being unselfish stems from him and his guys. Well, some of these profiles we've seen are unfair. We didn't talk to Rick about it, but we know that he was not particularly enamored of the Sports Illustrated piece. And uh, knowing him as we do, I don't mm -hmm. think it was a particularly accurate portrayal of uh, what he's like either. Well, I, I happened to do the Florida game and got a chance to talk to him about it. And uh, Unfortunately, uh, I thought the renderings or drawings were things that were more offensive, where they had him dragging his family around mm -hmm. the country kind of a thing. And you know, he's proven that he's very comfortable at Kentucky. And Joanne, who does love New York, uh, <laughs> because her family is there, right. loves Kentucky, too. I mean, she's uh, accustomed to the area and has a lot of very close friends. Peyton knocks one in from the top of the key. And it's 88-66, lead down to 22. And Coach Patino calls a timeout with three minutes remaining. It'll be a 20-second timeout. And the fact of the matter is, now that Rick Patino is in his seventh season at Kentucky, he is surpassed among SEC coaches in longevity at one school by only three others. Dale Brown, 24 years at LSU. Nolan Richardson, 11 years at Arkansas. 
and Richard Williams, 10 at Mississippi State. So those who thought he would go to Kentucky as a very brief stop and go on somewhere else, that obviously has not happened. Well, they had him uh, as the vagabond guy, yep. the guy that was looking to move quickly, and yet he, the tradition of Kentucky is so important to him, mm -hmm. and, and what it means in basketball is so important to him that he's carried this torch, this dedication, or desire to win. And he will not be satisfied until they win it. No. Make it a little small change, Nickel Dimer. No basket, foul before the basket. And now a full timeout with 2.47 remaining. We'll be back for the finish in a moment. Sean McDonough, Bill Raftery, back at the Metrodome, Kentucky on its way to its 31st victory of the year. To the delight of Joanne Patino and one of the five Patino children, Ryan, age five. Budding broadcaster, I think, Ryan. Uh, potential, huh? Yes, animated I, conversation. I think Joanne knows this is a boat ride right now. Her <laughs> husband, Rick, uh, still shouting out instructions. And a lot of rest for the starters, too, down the stretch here when you're looking forward to Saturday if you're a Kentucky fan. McCarty. Hope. Foul, count it, and Mark Pope will have a chance for a three-point play. <laughs> Did you see that? Uh, Anderson gave a little thump uh, at the end of this, but the ability to score inside, something I think that's developed for Pope and McCarty, and Anderson whacked him, and uh, Pope backed up. He was always concerned about his hair. The hair seems to have calmed down. <laughs> Why do you keep directing hair comments in my direction? What can I add to the conversation? Well, I have no knowledge. First well, you had prior experience, maybe a few years ago, but Ooh, much too long ago to remember. That actually was one 4.0 student fouling another. We mentioned Pope had a 4.0 last semester. Well, Drew Hansen's a perfect 4.0 for his entire tenure at Utah. He's never had anything less than an A in his sophomore season, and that's Drew scoring inside. Nice look by Reidolsch and Utah followers. Uh, Obviously, on the kiss runner. Not too bad. Is Wayne Turner able to knock it down? The Utah fans uh, can't forget the wonderful year they've had. Mm -hmm. This is just uh, uh, this team they're playing against is, if not the best, uh, tonight the best. McCarty rebounds the best. The Utah season will end at 27 and 7. Anderson fouled by Will Carlton. And he'll have a chance for a three-point play. Carlton just in the game's a freshman from Lawrenceburg, Kentucky, who grew up a huge Wildcat fan. Now they call him country, right? And look at this penetration and very impressed with him. He presents a lot of matchup problems for the opponent because of his flexibility. Oliver Simmons back into the game. Both coaches emptying the benches now. Andy Jensen, number 13, has come in. Paul Jonas, number four, into the game. Doug Meacham has come in, wearing number three. There's Nazim Muhammad for Kentucky. And Anderson trying to cap the three-point play, give the cast their 95th point of the night. 95 68 133 left Kentucky on its way to the victory that would tie them for the most all-time wins with the University of North Carolina Kentucky already the winningest program in the history of Division one basketball by percentage at 76 percent but on the bragging rights back and forth about the number of wins and UK is about to pull even. Rich tradition though, you know, Wawa Jones and Groza, Ramsey, I mean those are great names. I mentioned Issel. Terry Preston a miss. Hansen had his foot back swatted. Anderson on the push with Edwards on the wing. Uh, block called against Jonas. We will concede Kentucky this victory. Oh, you really are stretching. Bold move, up. isn't it? 52 mm -hmm. seconds left. They're ahead by 27. Now tied in wins all time with North Carolina, 1,647. And a chance to become number one by themselves on Saturday when they meet the winner of the game between Louisville and Wake Forest that comes up next here in Minneapolis. Sitting down. And smiling. Even Rick Petito knows it's over. Well, he said they're relaxed and loose. 
he said the seniors didn't have to think about career they just perform for him and the younger guys every night he just asked them to go play and they responded Kentucky advances to the elite eight and they await the winner of Louisville and Wake Forest the elite eight the last stop last year for Kentucky when North Carolina sent them home in the regional final in Birmingham and now every player dressed tonight for Kentucky is played as Cameron Mills comes into the game and Derek Anderson gets a warm greeting at the bench and deservedly so a nice contribution during the course of the season as well as tonight 97 68 Kentucky with 47 seconds left that turnover was the 21st committed by Utah tonight, which ties their season high. When you look at 63 points that they hold the opponents to Utah, you know, it's a very difficult evening. They had to control the score, the speed, handle the pressure, too many obstacles against an outstanding Kentucky team. Paul Jonas on the score sheet. His uncle, Jeff Jonas, a former Utah great, was the starting guard when Utah beat Kentucky back in 1976 in Lexington. Now does the radio color commentary on the Utah broadcast. Simmons trying to get them over 100, and he does. For the ninth time this year, Kentucky has scored 100 or more points. And for the second time in three games in the NCAA tournament, Jonas again, this time a three that won't go at the buzzer. And the season is over for Utah, 27 and 7. And Kentucky goes to 31 and 2 with a victory and odds, the Elite Eight. The genuine Chevrolet players of the game are from Utah, Ben Caton, uh, career high, 22 points. And for Kentucky, Antoine Walker, 19 points, 8 rebounds, and 6 assists.